Hello everyone, this is going to be a step-by-step -step video where I walk you through how to create a Amazon S3 object lambda. This is part two in a video series. In the first part, I explain to you what object lambda is and what it's all about. And if you want to watch that, I'll put a link to that video in the description section below. But here we are in the Amazon S3 section of the console, and this is the bucket that I'd like to expose as part of my object lambda. Just as a quick reminder of the steps that we need to do, we need to first create an access point. We're going to get to that in a moment. Then we need to create our Lambda function that's going to be responsible for transforming the data within the bucket. And then finally, we need to create the object Lambda access point. So those are the three key steps that we're going to be running through. So this is the bucket that I'm going to be using here. It's called Be A Better Dev Demo Bucket. If I just click on this guy and take a look at what's inside, I only have a singular file, which is this orders.json file. And if I click on this, and I go to the top right here where it says open and we take a look at what's inside. You can see it's just an array list to make this a little bit bigger perhaps so some of you can see. Um, and it just contains order entries. So we have customer ID, first name, uh, last name, email, order type, and order amount. So what we're going to be doing in our Lambda function is transforming this file through our object Lambda access point so that the results set only contains those that have purchase order types. You can see here in this data set that we have refunds, refunds, uh, refunds. So just purchases and refunds, but it's kind of a mixed bag in terms of what the result set contains. So that's what we're working with initially. Uh, and that's the data that we're going to be transforming. So on to the first step now, I'm going to go to the left-hand section here in the tab menu, and I'm going to click on access points. So from here, we're going to go to create access points, and I'm just going to give my access point a name. I'm just going to call mine uh, orders-ap, and then you need to give it the bucket name. Um, I'm going to go to browse here to just find my bucket. Here it is, and we're going to click on choose path here. And in terms of network origin, the requests are going to be coming from the internet. Now, one of the options that you can use here for access points is that if you want to re restrict your access such that this access point will only work from those that are within your VPC, you can do that. But I'm not going to be doing that in this demonstration. So I'm going to be selecting internet here. And additionally, you can also make your access point public so that it's callable from the internet. Uh, I don't suggest you to do that unless you really know what you're doing. Um, I'm going to be invoking my access point through the Amazon CLI and I'm going to be relying on IAM in order to make that possible. Now, if you want to add some additional access policies, um, or access point policies rather, this is great for restricting uh, the access to your bucket itself. But I'm not going to do that in this example. I'm just going to leave all this blank. We're going to go to the bottom now and click on create access point and that is now created perfect so the next step is we need to go and create our lambda function so i'm going to go over to the top bar here and type in lambda and yep lambda and then i'm going to go to create function in the top right you can name this whatever you want i'm just going to call this uh, access point demo and we're going to say just purchases that looks good I'm going to be using Python 3.9 here. We can leave this on x86. Everything else is good. Um, there are some permissions that we're going to need, and I'm going to actually need to go and create a new role in a moment here and change these permissions around because we're going to need S3 read and write access for this exercise to work. And unfortunately, if you see, if you click on the create a new role from an AWS policy template, the one that's available to you in the policy template section here, if you press S3, um, you only get read only and we actually need write. So this isn't going to going to work quite uh, as we need it to. Um, and I don't think I have one already. Actually, maybe I do use an existing role, maybe S3. No, I don't have one. So I'm going to need to create one a little bit later on and then uh, come back here in a second. So uh, we're going to do create a new role with basic Lambda permissions. Everything is good. Leave advanced settings as untouched. Uh, we're going to create this function now and just give this a moment to run its course. And in the meantime, I'm just going to grab the code that we're going to need so that I can explain to you uh, what our function is going to be doing. Ooh, dark mode. I think they uh, just released this. This is pretty cool looking, isn't it? I think um, because reInvent is coming up, this is probably one of the new announcements. Pretty, pretty nice. Uh, okay, so take everything out there and I'm just going to drop in this code. I will make this code available to you if you want to download this and check it out for yourself. So don't worry about copying and pasting this outside of this um, video here. So uh, let's take a look at what is going on. So we're using Boto3, URL, URL lib3, JSON, creating a uh, HTTP client over here. Uh, the first step is always to print the incoming event just to see what that event looks like. Now I've already done this, so I already know what this event looks like. 
um, and what I need to extract. So it's not really useful in my case. Uh, so our first step is that we need to extract some relevant metadata, including the S3 URL out of the input event. Now the S3 URL is going to be a pre-signed URL. So we don't need read permissions to access it. We can just use a HTTP request uh, with a get API. Um, but we do need some other details, which is the object get context, and that's via that key. We need something called an output route and an output token. And we're gonna be passing this back in when we process our data and write it back into S3 so that it can be returned to the caller. In addition, we also need that S3 URL, which we're gonna be using in the next section here, or the next step rather. So that's the first step, uh, first and second rather. Our next step is to actually make our HTTP request and we're gonna be using that S3 URL that we just extracted on line 14 here. And we're gonna be storing the response in the response variable. I'm just gonna take this original object and decode it in UTF-8. I'm gonna take it as a list and then I'm gonna store or create a result list that is just gonna contain all of my purchase records. Now my next step is to transform the object. So I'm just iterating over the object list. And if the order type is purchase, I'm adding it to my result set and we're pretty much done. We're just gonna iterate through them all. And so that uh, at the end of the day, the result list is only gonna contain those that contain the order type purchase. Uh, so that's pretty desirable and looks to be good. The next step is to write the object back to the S3 object lambda. This is a little bit weird in terms of how it works. You would expect that you can just return the object directly back as part of your lambda function. But in order to return it to the caller, you need to use this write get object response API, um, at least as part of Bodo 3. And you need to provide it the body. So I'm just doing um, JSON formatting here and we're passing in the result list. And you need to pass in two mandatory parameters. There's the request route, which we are using the token that we, or the route rather, that we just extracted up here, request route out of the input event. And we also doing the same thing with request token. Uh, so we got that request token being passed under the request token field. And then from there, make sure that you return a status code of 200 or else um, S3 is not gonna know if this succeeded correctly um, and it's gonna throw an exception back to the caller. So once you get this up to a point where you're satisfied, um, you're gonna go ahead and click on deploy here and change is deployed, everything is good. So what we need to do now is to go into IAM and give this a S3 policy. Well, we need to create a policy and then attach it to this Lambda. If you already know how to do that, you can skip this step. I'm just gonna show you how to do it really quick. Uh, so we're gonna go to IAM and I, oh, right, cool. So we're gonna go to the role section now and create a new role. Uh, so we're gonna go to the top right here where it says create role. And the first thing we need to do is we need to attach a Lambda basic execution role. This is gonna make it so that we can select this role from the Lambda section and attach it to that Lambda function. And we're gonna click on that, gonna go to next permissions. And this should be Lambda basic access role or basic execution role. Um, basic Lambda basic, I believe is what you need to search. Yeah, Lambda basic execution role. Gonna click on this guy, gonna go to next. Uh, and you know what, actually, before we do that, we need to get a different one. We need that S3 one as well. So I'm just gonna type in S3. We're gonna use S3 full access here. Gonna click on that. Gonna go to next tags, next review, and you can name this whatever you want. So uh, I'm just gonna call this full access S3 demo. And that should be good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and click on create role now. So what we can do now that this is completed is that we can go back into the Lambda section and we can assign that role to that Lambda function. So going to Lambda now, and I think I called this demo something. So yeah, so access point demo just purchases. We got that. Um, so we're gonna go to that and we're gonna go to configuration now. And under the permissions tab, which is what you see here, make sure you go to edit and we should be able to find that role now. So I think it was S3 something. Yeah, so full access S3 demo. If you don't see a role listed here, it's because you forgot to add that AWS Lambda basic execution role. So make sure you do that or else this isn't gonna work. All right, so click on this guy. You're gonna go ahead and click on save now. Uh, so everything is good to go from the Lambda function side. Now all we need to do is go back into S3 and create that object Lambda access point. So we're going back into S3 here and we're gonna to have to point it to our Lambda function. So under the left-hand side where it says object Lambda access points, click on that guy, and we're gonna to go to create object Lambda access point. 
And then in terms of the name, we're just going to call ours just dash purchases. And in the next section here, it's going to ask us for the supporting access point that we want to use. So we're going to have to point it to our previous access point that we just created in the first step of this video. And if you press browse, then you can select which one you just created here, which is orders dash AP. So I'm going to click on choose supporting access point now. And you can see everything got um, kind of pre-filled out here. And in terms of the Lambda function now, uh, we're going to select the one that we just created. And I, again, I forget the name. Oh, there it is. Access point demo just purchases. You can also select a specific uh, version if you want of your Lambda function. Uh, if, you if you're maintaining multiple different versions, but um, I'm not doing that here. So I'm going to leave that as latest. And I'm going to leave everything else default here. So not specifying any more contents, including the policy. Um, we're blocking all public access. That is all very desirable. And we're pretty much good here. So we can click on create object Lambda access point now, and we are good to go. So we should be pretty set up. So now in order for us to test all this out, I'm going to use cloud shell, which you can access by clicking this top button right here. If for whatever reason you don't see this button, you can just type in cloud shell and it should come up. Uh, yep. Yeah, so you can click it that way, but let's just do it through this shorthand way up here. Uh, this does sometimes take a moment or so in order for it to initialize, but this was pretty quick for me actually. So let's clear all this out, make this a little bit bigger so you can see. And I do have a command that I've already um, established before this. So I'm just going to drop this in here and explain it to you. Uh, so we're doing AWS S3, and I actually already ran the command, uh, S3 API. We're using the get object API. We're giving it the bucket uh, parameter, and this is the value. So this is the ARN of your object Lambda. Um, so you need to grab that object Lambda ARN from the previous step. I actually forgot to point that out when I was creating it, but you need to grab that and put that in as your endpoint now. You can see the, the stark difference when you're normally performing a get object API is you normally just give it the ARN to the bucket and the key that you're trying to use. But now we are using that access point and we're using the object Lambda uh, endpoint as well. So that's what's going on here. And then we're using the key, which is the orders.json file. That's the one that we want to transform. And then uh, we have the transformed underscore data.json, which is the file that it's going to write to on local disk. So now if I just do ls, you should see, yep, transform data.json. So I'm just going to do vi transform data. And this is not the most pleasant to read, I must say, but you can see here, uh, if we're looking at order types, purchase, 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 um, I'm not seeing any refunds here. So this just confirms that everything is working correctly and we're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video on setting up S3 Object Lambda. Make sure to check out the other ones on the right on S3 if you're interested. And thanks so much for watching.